what are we doing here? We are replacing a solar edge inverter yet again. Se second time? Second time at this house. How long did it take to get the, the new refurbished model? This one wasn't so bad, it was about a week. Oh, that's not bad. Um, I've had some that have been as bad as like a couple months, depending on the model. I feel like a, like a NASCAR on a pit crew. <clears throat> You're doing more than them. They only have a single lug now. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> one in the center. <laughs> so how often is this happening where we're out here basically just fixing an inverter or replacing it versus, you know, replacing like an end phase inverter? I mean... For our solar edge customers, unfortunately, it's been probably 30 to 40 percent of the inverters installed have had a failure. Yeah. I usually tell people 25 percent, and even then, I'm like a little cautious to say a figure that high. But you're saying 30 or 40? I would say, yeah, it's. I mean, I don't have the exact figure, but it's it's up there, and you know, like this thing, this is the second time we're here. Um, there's other sites where, you know, I've, I've replaced them for, you know, two, two, three times. It's just, it's wild. So I've heard that a lot of contractors are called by the manufacturer because they install their products for their own systems, but then they'll get called from the manufacturer and they'll say, hey, like we have this other system that we need work done on. And then a lot of contractors kind of like yeah. ignore that request or just kind of run kind of run away from from that service work because it's not like profitable there's really like getting paid like 150 bucks for the truck roll just like isn't really worth anyone's time so that customer still is kind of like not left out to dry completely but it's not like someone's rushing over there to replace their inverter right away is that kind of the experience that you how you kind of understand that process yeah absolutely i mean i've been contacted by or i haven't been contacted directly from the manufacturer like but i have in the past like more so with end phase where you know they'll they'll say hey you know all tech is uh you know the nearest uh you know contractor to to your site or whatever and um, you know, give them contact information. But. And do you have to like do the work or is it kind of one of those things where you can kind of just say, eh, go on to the, the next no, contractor? I mean, you definitely don't have to accept the work. And like I said before, like, you know, we've had a time recently where it's like, we just don't have the time or the resources to, to take on the extra service work. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, they're gonna have to find somebody else. But there are companies that are, you know, strictly service companies. They just charge a whole lot of money, I assume, since that's their yeah, bread and I mean, butter. Um, I, I took over a service for one customer. It wasn't our customer. It was when Sullivan went out of business. And uh, another contractor was trying to charge him, on top of the labor and reimbursement, he was trying to charge him $500 to replace his, his inverter. And so once he told me that, I was like, then I, that I felt bad for him. And I, and I was like, well, fine, I'll take the service call. I'm not going to charge you anything extra. I, like, I'm getting paid from the manufacturer. Like, is it a lot? No. Is it worth it? No. But like, I don't want to see that customer have to pay $500 to go get an you know, inverter replaced. On the flip side, though, from a business perspective, like a contractor can't just go out and do a bunch of like service work for 150 bucks. So like in a way they would have to, in reality, you know, you would have to charge 500 bucks in yeah, order no, to be I, sustainable. I, I get it. If you're right? going to try and be, you know, profitable on doing service work, yeah, you're going to have to charge for some of these time, the truck roll, you need all of that stuff. It's just, uh, I don't know. For me, it's like the customers already made this initial investment in the system. And it sucks when, when they have to experience, you know, oh, the initial cost of the system was, you know, 18, 20 grand. And then, you know, years later it fails. Not even, not even you know, it's, it's, you know, you're talking about a 25 year plus system and a couple years into it, major components are failing. And I have to like, here, if I charge them $500 every time they come out, 
you'd be a thousand dollars into servicing the system when you know in the beginning we pretty much said like hey this is a system that's going to last and it's going to be on your, your your house for 25 years and you're going to be good so then like that looks bad on on us saying that we've got this system and so do you so so do you think it makes more sense to just basically pay a little bit more to get micros or should someone just basically buy a second inverter right off the bat just have it in I've their had garage several waiting? customers where you know where i've had to replace it multiple times they're like what can i do to avoid this and they are willing to buy a backup inverter so that it's just sitting there waiting to win because they, they just don't they they know that the, the inverter is not reliable so instead of being down for a week, two weeks, couple months, whatever, um, they have that inverter and they can just call me out and get it replaced. But how hard is this to do? Like, let's say you if I wasn't around... filming this video, it'd be in and out in an hour. So, you know, maybe, maybe an hour and a half, depending. I mean, sometimes you have to replace the bracket, but um, what are, what are the time and it's, it's an hour. What are some of the unique tools? Because obviously it seems relatively simple. Okay, you're undoing some wires, you're yanking the thing off the wall, you're gonna get the new one, you're gonna put it back couple, on the wall and yeah, you're gonna reattach the wires. Like, what, like where's the difficulty in here in terms of like, like why would a homeowner not wanna do this and you would want an actual electrician that's licensed to, to do this? Like, what's the risk here? I mean, if you know how to safely turn it off, I mean, it's really not that complicated. I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say that, oh, it's it's so complicated and you have to hire a professional and you have to hire somebody licensed. Like, come on, it's, it's you know, this is a total of nine wires. Like, we're undoing some bolts, we're undoing some connection points. If you know how to turn it on and turn it back on, uh, turn, it, turn it off and turn it back on, like, it's, it's not rocket science. Um, but yeah, like, do you want to know how to turn it off, how to turn it on? You know, are these AC wires, DC wires? Are these AC wires, DC wires? Like, you know, like you do need to have some general knowledge of, of the system, but it's. Do you want the headaches to begin with? Do yeah, you even I, want? Yeah, I would say you, you you hired somebody, you hired a professional to install your system in the first place. So just have the professional come out and do it because it's going to take me an hour. How long is it going to take a homeowner? It's going to take them three hours or something. Do they really want to take that time? Is it really worth it, worth it to them? Probably not. So, yeah. How many microinverters have you had to replace in the last couple of years? Like how many IQ8s? I know that there were like a couple out of the factory right at the beginning that had some issues. Yeah, I would say, I would say the, the failures in terms of like the IQ systems, it was more so dead on arrival. Um, it was like we were commissioning the system and, and uh, a micro never reported and we go out there and you know it's plugged in and, it's, it's, and it just ended up not working so but it was like one in a thousand one in 1500 you know something like that so it's it's been an insignificant amount compared to so it so 30, it 30 percent of the the you know the single point inverter that powers the whole system and the whole system's down for you know, potentially several weeks and you've got a homeowner that's having to, you know, go through that and pay for, for electricity during that time. So, so we have to go back to like 30 to 40% of the sites that we install solar edge on. And with a end phase system, we have to go back to like less than one in that's, that's been my experience. And maybe some others have, you know, like you were saying, 25%, maybe that's what, you know, maybe we're just unlucky. Maybe we just had, you know, a high rate of failures on, on solar edge. Uh, and, and other people only experience, you know, 15, 20, 25. Um, and, and some people could probably say different on end phase. Some people could say, oh, it was, you know, one in a hundred. Same thing. Maybe they just get the, the bad batch. But I'd say overall, my experience, uh, end phase systems have been much more reliable. And I'm looking to do this a lot less. <laughs> so we're going to push the product and sell a product that's more reliable and that we can put our name on and that's going to be end phase so that's why we that's why we've switched <laughs>